uh, the, the first question, right now there's a, a huge divide in the United States right now about whether United States should join the war uh, with Israel against Hamas and Hezbollah and even Iran. Does Israel want the help from United States? First of all, uh, the United States is helping uh, Israel all the time. After all, we are the proxy of the democracy in the Middle East, and we appreciate very much with what America is doing over the years to support Israel. Specifically about the war, I think that uh, as long as we are uh, talking about Hamas, and even Hezbollah, I, I believe that Israel will not ask for any type of, of uh, involvement of uh, U.S. in terms of military involvement. But as if Iran will be involved, I think that Iran is not a local issue. Iran is a worldwide issue. It is one of the out, one out of maybe three more terrible regimes, that they oppress their people, that they are radical, that they oppress their women, that they are trying to reach a nuclear a weapon, and if they are trying to do so, it's not because they are afraid of Syria or, or Arab Saudi, it is because they have their own plan, which are beyond the Israel issue. So I think that in that case, it will be the right thing that the U.S. will be involved. But with Hamas and uh, Hezbollah, Israel can basically handle Israel self. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I tell you, I believe that we can also deal with Iran. But I think <laughs> that in case that Iran will get involved, it will be important for the world, not only for Israel, to escalate and to bring to this world not only U.S., also all the Western world that will be in risk if Iran will have nuclear weapon. Does Iran have nuclear weapon? Because right now there's a lot of saying that Israel might use nuke if Israel got pushed back and Iran started to do something about it? Is Israel running out of ammunition? What Once Israel run out of ammunition, if we don't help, Israel will use nuclear bomb. Is that uh, true uh, to your knowledge? Oh, Israel, <laughs> I think it, uh, it doesn't make sense. I, don't, I cannot see a scenario that Israel will get out of munition. I don't think that the, it is in the interest of the U.S. Uh, that Israel will be in higher risk. I think that uh, the U.S. beyond the values and the moral and the fact that we are two democracies, the U.S. has very strong interest in a powerful Israel. So I don't think that that will happen, even if Israel will not obey what the government in the U.S. may try to dictate in the upcoming weeks. This is my feeling. Hmm. Okay, uh, another question is that Saudi Arabia uh, is having peace talk with Iran. Uh, they're, they're, they're basically reconcile the difference they have. So basically the Sh Shi'i and Sunni Sunna. Uh, they, 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 they kind of just got reconnected. Uh, is that a bigger threat to Israel or that it's something that we don't, Israel don't really have to worry about because uh, Saudi Arabia have a pact with U.S. and Israel as well? My gut feeling is that what Saudi Arabia has been doing in the last uh, year mainly regarding Iran is something quite tricky. Uh, I, I don't believe that uh, Saudi Arabia wants to... Uh, I think that they will need to choose a side or to be part of the logic of the logic countries to be with the, let's say, with the good guys or 
to take a decision to be with the bad guys, which is Iran. And uh, my feeling is that all the talks about a possible agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran is not more than uh, they're playing a game. This is my, again, my personal opinion. And uh, we will see in the upcoming month what will be happening. You know, uh, from an historical point of view, you know that uh, Sunan Shia uh, even had not been able to be united in their hate to Israel over the years. So they have their own conflict, ideological conflict. Uh, I don't see uh, that will happen so easily, a potential agreement between Saudi Arabia and, uh, and Iran. Yeah, uh, next question would be, right now there is two carrier strike group from the U.S. Uh, in the Mediterranean Sea right now. Do you think that is helping uh, Israel to hold off Iran and uh, more terrorist attack, or that is actually doing the opposite? They, uh, Joe Biden actually want to drag America uh, into war and uh, just put our soldiers over there to get hit by terrorist attack. Uh, we have bases in uh, I Iraq and as well as Syria, and to my knowledge that they are getting attacked, we just want U.S. soldiers to die so we can have that mentality that we want to go to war. Do you think uh, Carrier Strike Group is helping Israel or is making things more complicated from a strategic point of Israel? I think from a strategic point of view, uh, I, I am uh, happy with that because I think that it it's another element of uh, deterrence toward uh, uh, Iran, toward their proxy in Lebanon. Uh, I think I am uh, in pros of that. I'm not sure that at the end of the day there will be need, but the fact that they are in the in the Mediterranean and uh, uh, the Iranians understand that uh, that can escalate uh, if they will take the wrong decision. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of a deterrent. Uh, Hamas seems to me that they are just some not so sophisticated military group. And then uh, what they do is uh, not that dangerous to a modern day army. How much time do you think Israel need to uh, eliminate Hamas? And uh, is there a problem going after Hezbollah because it is located in Lebanon? My understanding is that in order to eliminate uh, Hamas, not a 90%, 100%, and it is possible. Maybe it's not possible to eliminate the ideology, but to eliminate the, the, the terrorist, uh, the army uh, arm, um, the political arm, it is doable. I, I think that we'll need a couple of months to do that, not less than that. And the question if we will have this uh, the America if will uh, will not start uh, putting some pressure on Israel before. Uh, it is taking, by the way, more time that it should have taken, because we first of all care about our soldiers, uh, and we also care about killing civilians. You you understand that we we are not a Hamas in that sense. Uh, when civilians, uh, Palestinian civilians are killed, it's not because we want to kill them, it is because they are there, and that's what happened. Uh, but the way that IDF is acting in Gaza right now is very, very cautious, very slowly, and that is the reason that the number of casualties, at least in our end, is relatively low. Think about that. We are entering into 
into hell. Gaza is hell. And uh, after all, 53 soldiers fall so far. You know, any soldier that fall is really <laughs> a strong pain. But when you look it from a, at the, at the total, the number is, is quite low for the achievement that has been achieved so far. Uh, and we hopefully, IDF will continue really step by step, slowly. Uh, there is a very proof practice how to advance into the Gaza Strip, which has been proven in the last few weeks. And I think that IDF will follow that uh, tactics in the as as long as the war will uh, will continue, and as I say, that will prevent uh, casualties in our end, and it will uh, diminish the number of civilians that will be uh, killed uh, during the that time uh, time period of time. Uh, how is the uh, religious aspect uh, implemented into this war. Does, uh, does a lot of Jews are religious in the in Israel or the population? It's how how much percentage is more worldly and how much percentage of Jews are uh, very religious, like Orthodox, uh, based on your knowledge. You mean in in the whole population of Israel? Well, you can give me two numbers. One is the whole population of Israel and one is Israeli army, mm. military. Okay, in the, in, the, in the population, more or less it is 25% uh, in the general population, but you know, it's 25% are religious, but at least another 25% are maybe not religious, but they, are, they keep the traditions. Okay, they keep uh, kosher, uh, they in some way keep Shabbat, observe Shabbat. So those that go with kippah might be 25%, but those that really keep the, some of the rules and observe Shabbat and, observe, and keep, uh, I think it's much more, 50% at least. In the army, uh, uh, the, I think that the numbers are more, more or less the same, like 25%, but, but it's a number that can uh, uh, mistaken a little bit because when I'm talking about the 25% of religious people from the total population of Israel, it includes also the, el the ultra-Orthodox that they don't enlist most of them to the IDF. So if we roughly split the religious people in Israel, the 25%, let's say 50% are ultra-Orthodox that they don't enlist, and 50% with about 12, 13, 40% is from the uh, national uh, religious Jewish. And if there are still 25%, it means that the, the presence in the armies of this part of the population is very, very high. Okay, mm. understand what I say? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's some very important information that we need. Well, a, a lot of people are saying that uh, God used this uh, attack on Israel to judge Israel or and, uh, or give Israel basically like a, a punishment because of these LGBT inside Israel and all this uh, sexual immorality inside Israel. And uh, Israel is the only country that allow uh, same-sex marriage and stuff in the Middle East. And God is judging Israel because of that. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I absolutely don't agree with that say, because, you know, when you look at the history of Israel, uh, since the days of uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and David and Solomon and the Maccabean 
and the first temple and the second temple and the exile from Israel, from the land of Israel, and the holocaust and so on, you can say, okay, what's going on here? The chosen nation, the chosen people, they are punished all the time. Uh, although they are the chosen people, how that can be? So uh, I'm, uh, I don't pretend to understand the thinking of God. And I think this is a very stupid thinking to, to, to go in that direction, to try to understand God's thinking. I can tell you that two things. You can see many chapters in the history of the Jewish people that the Jewish people commit a lot of sins, mm -hmm. okay? Idolatry, idolatry, and so on. But because they were unified, they were unified, we managed to survive quite well. From the other side, you can see other chapters in the life, in the life cycles of Jewish people, that people were very, very religious and they kept the rule and so on, but there was a lot of hatred between them. I, I, I don't, uh, as I say, I don't pretend to understand God. I know God's words. We have the Torah. We know what has to be done. What is the correct thing that should be done? What are the correct values? What are the correct commandments? We know exactly what they are and we are committed to fulfill them. But from here and on, to start doing any accounting, if God is happy with us or is not happy, or if he's punishing us or is not punishing us, beyond my understanding. I believe in God because I believe in God. It has nothing to do with his accounting over the history, because otherwise... It's... We're making judgment yes, for exactly. God. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a lot of questions about uh, real Jews and fake Jews. Uh, some people say that, ah, oh, right now Jewish people in Israel is full of uh, Eskenazi Jews, and then uh, this kind of Jew, that kind of Jew. What does that mean? And uh, what, what, what we can, can you explain the heritage of uh, Jewish people and what's the difference between what are Eskenazi Jews? What are what? Uh, Eskenazi Jews. Eskenazi Jews? Uh, let, let me, let me. Ah, Ashkenazi. Oh, Ashkenazi. Okay, Ashkenazi. sorry, sorry. My pronunciation. <laughs> what, what does that mean? First of all, Ashkenazi versus Faradi Jewish. Okay, this is the split between Jewish people that return to the promised land from the Western world, from Europe, mm -hmm. from the US, whatever, versus Sfaradi. Sfarad means Spanish, okay, in other words, that, that referred to Jewish that mostly came from the East world, most of them from Muslim countries, but not only, also from India, from Yemen, Algier, Tunis, Morocco, Egypt, Syria, uh, and so on, so on. So this is like the split uh, between Ashkenazi and Sfaradi. Now, traditionally, the people that came from the Sfaradi, from the, yeah, they are more traditional than the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi are more, you know, like the Western people, more the intellect, the high tech, blah, 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 blah. All right. But uh, these type of differences are really, as long as the year pass, are getting more and more, they are disappearing because Ashkenazim married with Faradim, at the end of the day, they are all Jewish. And if people prevent from marrying, for instance, is what we call cultural issues. They say, oh no, he came from a, from a, from a community that, uh, you know, it was 
too conservative or too traditional, and you are Ashkenazi, you are looking at the life in a different way, so it will not work, blah, 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 but today is not true. I just want to tell you as a summary of this point, one thing. The Ashkenazi and the Sfaradi, we learn the same Bible, we learn the same Torah, we have the same books, the differences in the daily praying are minor, we all say the same, uh, even the same songs in Shabbat. Uh, we know exactly the same history of the Jewish people. We know exactly who drive us out of Egypt before 3,005 ago. Moses, there is no <laughs> contradiction of that. We know exactly uh, what was the history of David and Solomon and so on, so on. By the way, there is an interesting uh, uh, question, an uh, interesting point that I will share with you. Uh, before more or less 70 years ago, when Ben Gurion was the first uh, prime minister of Israel, he came to the US to ask for support. I don't remember who was the president by then. And uh, the president by then asked, but why is it? You, you know, your country is so new, who knows if your country will have continuity? Why you need the support of you? Why we should grant you support? Blah, blah, blah. And then the Ben Gurion told him, Mr. President, if you will go out in the street and you will ask the children, what was the name of the first immigrant from Ireland, yes, to the America before 400 years ago. How many Americans will know the name of the ship? One, the Mayflyer. Flyer. Two, how many people will know who was the captain of that? Will know his name, okay? And John then Smith. <laughs> said, say, how many? We know, we know as Jewish people exactly who was the driver of the Jewish people exiting. You will take any children in the street in Israel and will ask him who took the Jewish people out of Egypt. Everybody will tell you it was Moses. How long it lasts, everybody will know that it was 40 years and it will reach the land of Israel. And what he wanted to show him, listen, President of America, I'm very, uh, I came here to ask for your support, but I don't think that there is another nation in the world that we have a so clear understanding of our tradition 3,500 years ago, and everybody will be able to say that in three minutes basically conclude my uh, questions for you. Yeah, I, I think these are very important issues. And then uh, our God is an awesome God. Israel will win. And uh, I pray that the war doesn't escalate to a world war and America don't have to put boots on the ground on Israel. And I believe that Israel will have the ability with God's help to defeat Hamas and Hezbollah and all the enemy of Israel. Amen. And I think, yeah, I think that whoever is trying to drag US into a world war escalated, it's the work of devil. I, 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 I strongly think that because Israel can defeat its enemy, it's done it before many, many times. So you guys will do fine, and uh, God bless you. Thank you, thank you. We will defeat the evil, not only for Israel, but also for the world. All right. Thank you. Thank you.